Cedar Hill Cemetery is the final resting place of several notable stunt flyers, aviation innovators, and early supporters of winged flight. Edson Gallaudet received degrees from Hartford Public High School, Yale, and John Hopkins University. He worked at Westinghouse Electric and Manufacturing Company for a year before becoming an instructor of physics at Yale, where he taught and coached crew from 1897 to 1900. Gallaudet was a pioneer in the field of aviation, being the first person to experiment with warped wings. In 1898, he built a warping wing kite to test his ideas. This kite survives and is part of the collection at the National Air and Space Museum. Yale viewed the tinkering with flying gimcracks as a poor reflection on the university and accused Gallaudet of making an ass of himself and a laughing stock of the faculty. Gallaudet resigned his position and his model was stored in a barn unpatented. Gallaudet then worked in Philadelphia and Dayton, Ohio before returning to Connecticut. In 1908, he established the Gallaudet Engineering Company in Norwich. The company is regarded as the first aircraft manufacturing company in the U.S. Eventually, the company became primarily involved in the manufacture of seaplanes for the U.S. Navy. Born in New Britain, Charles Hamilton became interested in flying at an early age. At 18, he became active in hot air ballooning and parachute jumping at circuses and fairs. Three years later, he began piloting dirigibles. In 1909, after the problem of heavier-than-air flight was solved, he learned to fly airplanes under aviation pioneer Glenn H. Curtis. Hamilton joined Curtis's exhibition team and quickly acquired fame. Races, long-distance flights, and other forms of aerial competition became regular activities. In 1910, he won a prize of $10,000 for being the first to fly from New York to Philadelphia and back. Hamilton achieved records for cross-country distance and duration for the flight. The trip included flying 33 miles over water with no protection but three inner tubes of bicycle tires wrapped around his waist. Hamilton became known for his dangerous dives, spectacular crashes, extensive reconstructive surgeries, and ever-present cigarette. His aviation career was cut short when he died at age 28 from a lung hemorrhage after a long bout with tuberculosis. Donald Brown was an early innovator of aviation. As a young man in Wisconsin, he worked a variety of jobs, including newspaper carrier, journalist, store clerk, and steel worker. After attending Northwestern University, he started his aviation career as head of engine assembly at Simplex Automobile Company, which evolved into Wright Martin Aircraft Corporation. Brown held several positions within the aviation industry before becoming a co-founder of Pratt & Whitney Aircraft Company. In 1925, Pratt & Whitney Tools loaned $250,000, use of its name, and space in its building for the new venture. With Frederick Rensler and others, Brown sought to produce lighter weight engines with greater power. Its first engine, the 425 horsepower R1340 Wasp, powered the aircraft of many record flights. In 1930, Brown became president of United Aircraft Corporation, the latter name of Pratt & Whitney Aircraft. As president, he led the company to become one of the world's largest producers of airplanes, engines, and propellers, and worked closely with the U.S. military. His memorial at Cedar Hill commemorates his successful aviation career with a propeller adorning the front of the monument. In 1927, at age 20, Mary Goodrich Jensen, a student pilot at Hartford's Brainerd Field, became the first woman in Connecticut to earn a pilot's license. Mary worked for the Hartford Current as its first aviation editor and later became the first woman to have a byline column. She piloted a Fairchild KR-21 biplane and made history as the first woman to fly solo in Cuba. She competed in air shows and bomb throwing, which consisted of dropping bags of flour at targets on the ground. In 1929, Mary was a charter member of the 99s, an organization created to provide support for women in aviation. Lemuel Custis was the last surviving member of the 1st Tuskegee Airmen class. Prior to being drafted into the military, Custis earned a degree from Howard University and in 1939 became Hartford's first African-American police officer. In 1941, the Army Air Corps began a pilot training program for an African-American flying unit in Tuskegee, Alabama. This was the first program of its kind and Custis was among the group of men to enter the program. Of the original 13, five graduated, including Custis. Custis flew 92 combat missions while assigned to the 99th Fighter Squadron, 
receiving the Distinguished Flying Cross for his heroism. He later returned to Tuskegee as an advanced flight instructor and was released from active military service from the U.S. Army Air Force in 1946 as a major. Custis, along with other Tuskegee Airmen, are credited with paving the way for African Americans to serve in a less segregated United States military. To learn more about people buried at Cedar Hill, visit Cedar Hill Cemetery Foundation's website at cedarhillfoundation.org and look for more videos on our YouTube channel.